the Indian ivory would have been an elephant ivory piece. One of the ways you want to look at on your ivory, when you're looking at ivory, as opposed to it being bone, or there's a lot of times you'll find even plastic that's passed off ivory. One is the weight. But the other is you get a loop and you're looking for the, the growth line. And a bone, bone will grow straight and there'll be like little pinholes in it. Ivory on the other hand has like an it cross hatch. And you'll see the growth lines along in here you'll see it with a loop that this is, shows that this actually is ivory. I mean we knew this to begin with but that confirms what we already pretty well knew that this was ivory to begin with. Then the, the issue is on um, valuing a piece is age is not necessarily the friend of ivory. Um, age, you know, ivory dries out and can de de deteriorate. So if she has this on display, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think she does. But if you do, you never want to put it in direct sunlight. And you also want to have some sort of humidity. Now here in the Northwest, we seem to have a lot of natural humidity with all the rain we have, so, as opposed to like Arizona or something. So like if you have it in a cabinet, all you really need to do is to keep a glass of water or a little bowl of water here. And, 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 and it, that gives enough humidity to help slow down the, the disintegration of the ivory. What if she just has it packed away in a box? That's fine. Oh, it yeah. doesn't need humidity. I wouldn't think so then, no. Okay, if out. But if it's out, where the elements are going to try and dry it out more. If she has it packed away like she has properly, there shouldn't be a problem. Right. The receipts is really fun to have. They have the ivory uh, in the ivory works in uh, Bangalore, India, and these receipts from the 1960s for some ivory pieces help you date. And that's important because the law as it stands right now to sell ivory, you have to show proof that you've received it. It has to be before the 1980s. So this helps you be able to where you can sell it. Now the laws are changing, so you need we need to keep aware of it. The Fish and Wildlife would like to have it to where we can't sell ivory at all. Anything even with ivory in it, they wouldn't allow us to sell. It's the way that they're trying to get the law written now. And that would mean for example, then you couldn't sell, if you had a $100,000 Steinway Grand Piano, you couldn't sell it because that ivory key. Or if you have a Sterling Key Service and it has ivory insulators, you couldn't sell it because there's ivory in it. And that, so that hasn't gone That through. hasn't gone in and they're, they're, they're doctoring it. I believe, my personal belief is that even if it does go through, it'll have to get amended because it's just, the repercussions of that are ridiculous. You yeah. know, your grandma's tea service You're is welcome. not the reason that the elephants are being killed in, 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 in Africa for that. So, but it is a certain thing that the major antique auction houses, Christie's, Sotheby's, Bottoms, all the, none of them will touch ivory or anything with ivory at all. Even right now, they won't touch it. So it's affected the value because you're limited on how you can sell it. So you have to do a private sale. Now, as far as what is it worth? So that's that's the laws and what's happening, and that's all transitory. We're looking here at this piece. We have a little bit of damage, but it's a clean break. The, 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 his robe, the top part of his robe, and so that could be mended without any, without, without hardly ever being able to tell it ever happened. So before you, you were to sell it, so I'm not going to discount it very much because of that. Where would she go to get that fixed? Well, a jeweler would be the best. Are, are you from Vancouver? Yeah. Yeah, you might talk to uh, like uh, Bain, or Bainbridge Jewelry down on Main Street or Joe Lanning. And he's down on Main Street because of my jeweler. And he's on the lower end of Main Street. You might talk to one of them to see if they couldn't find a way of doing a post and putting it in there and repairing it. Okay, we know him jeweler, Tim Barlow. Uh, Tim's awesome. Talk, I know him. Oh, you know him. He and my brother were great friends years ago. Oh, okay. And I haven't seen him in years, but yeah. Tim's a good guy. Talk He's to Tim. Yeah, yeah, talk to Tim. See if he doesn't have an idea on repairing that. A bench jeweler can fix it. 
Possibly your dentist could fix it, but he'll probably charge you more. Oh. Anyway, when you go to judge these, you look on how well carved they are. And if you look at this one, their faces are beautiful. This is a very well carved piece. You'll find a lot of ivory that comes straight out of India where it's very amateurishly done. So the ivory material itself has a little somewhat of a value, but the real value is how, of a, how much of a piece of art it is. The detail in their hands, their arms, his headdress, all through this piece. And this is a dancing lovers, and if I was smarter, I could tell you off the top of my head which god he is. But um, I'd have to do a little bit more research. Oddly enough, I don't know the name of every Indian god there. Oh, but... what's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful. And they're in the love embrace, they're doing the da love dance, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful image. In a perfect world, having that repaired properly, if this was out for sale, I would anticipate a retail selling price of it at uh, probably around $900 to $1,200.